Well, tonight we're going to discuss very specific. No patience, no promise. Good title. No patience, no promise. And we're going to start tonight. We're going to start tonight in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36. Hebrews 10, 36. Hebrews 10, 36. Got that one? Yeah. Oh, thank you. For you have need of endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Amen. In the King James, it calls the word endurance patience. Mm -hmm. So he says, you have need of patience. Now, this is interesting. I've had people tell me, I've got a lot of patience. But Paul, writing to the Hebrews, he said, you are in need of patience. <laughs> Listen, if he was writing to us tonight, I'm going to say it like this. You're in need of patience. He said, when patience, when patience, he said, you have need of patience after you've done the will of God. Now, he's still saying, stay, do the will of God and hold on with patience that you might receive the offering. No patience. I mean, he received the promise. No patience. <laughs> no promise. <laughs> no patience. We have some people say, oh, I just don't have any patience. Well, I guarantee you're telling me I can't believe God for the promise. Because you won't hold on. He says if you don't have patience, you won't get the promise. In the Living New Testament, it says it like this. You need to keep on patiently doing God's will if you want Him to do for you what He has promised. Amen. My Bible. It's a fruit of the Spirit. It is. It is a fruit... It is a fruit of the Spirit. King James is long-suffering. It is. It is. <laughs> Amen. In, according to the Word, patience is valuable to God. Tell us what your Bible says. This Bible says that it just, the word endurance describes the capacity to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances. Not with passive complacency, but with a hopeful fortitude that actively resists weariness and defeat. Ooh. Expectancy Ooh. without weariness. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Some of us have a tendency to start out strong, but by the time we've run to the mailbox, we're done. It's like, I don't have any more. And he says, he says in the... In Hebrews 10.36, he says, I want you to have, listen, you have need of patience. Patience is valuable to God. Our society does not promote patience. We promote instant gratitude. Don't wait. It's microwave society. Do it fast. Some things you got to put in the slow cooker. Yes. They don't make it in the microwave. Anybody tried that microwave cake? Some people say that's good. But I used to have a slow baked cake by my grandma. She, she made it all by hand. She'd cut all the ingredients and lay them all up on the table. And I'll tell you what, I got a hold of some baking soda one day and I threw that down because it was just sitting there in a little cup. Don't eat the baking soda. <laughs> it's not good by itself. <laughs> it's, it's not good by itself. Listen, God wants us to hold on patiently. We're a quick society, an instant society. We want to do stuff fast. We say it's God. Mm -hmm. So if someone offers a job, we take it. No prayer. No time involved in meditation. Some people say, well, I took the first job that came along. And four weeks later, they said, I sure wish I hadn't done that. Because yeah. <laughs> there's some timing involved with the Lord. Sometimes people decide their church based on how far they have to drive. Yeah. Well, it's in my backyard, so I go there. I said, but that's not even the same denomination you were raised in. They go, well, it's close enough. They're all the same, right? No, they're not all the same. God's got you a specific place to be. And I appreciate all of you coming. Uh, it's important. Yeah. Now, 
Some people get married. They want instant gratification. So they got married. As soon as somebody said, I'm very interested in you, let's get married. It's like, whoa. I've had to tell some couples, slow down. You're going way too fast. Wait a minute. This It's not time to rush in. You need to think about this. You need to pray. Have you prayed? Well, we said okay. We said grace last night. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. <laughs> we need more patience. Proverbs 14 and verse 12. Proverbs 14 and verse 12. By the way, I get a lot of, I get a kick out of preparing Tuesday night service, so I'm glad you're here. I'm going to preach it to my wife if you weren't, so there you go. <laughs> Proverbs 14, verse 12. And I'll take an offering too. Yeah, yeah. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 14, 12. Who's got that one? Yes, go ahead, please. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Wow. Proverbs is very clear. You think it's going to be okay, but it's deadly. You chose too fast. You worked too fast. You grabbed it too fast. You didn't pay any attention. You need some patience in this thing. You didn't ask the voice of God what He wanted you to do. Now, there's no fasting involved. There was no prayer involved. And some people say, well, that's okay. It just seemed all right. It seemed all right to me. God says, yeah, there's a scripture on that. It seems right to a man, but stop and pray. Listen, I stop and pray pretty much about everything. In fact, I've offended some folks because they say, you got to pray about everything? Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I sometimes don't pray over my meal until it comes. But I, if I if I do right, I pray over the preparation as well. Mm -hmm. I'm helping somebody. Because yeah. if the food comes to you and it's not right, and you say, well, it doesn't taste good, you didn't probably pray for the guy to wash his hands before he's... Are you with me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got to pray. Sometimes I pray and they don't deliver my meal on time. And I'm like, Lord, I prayed for my food. He said, uh, they didn't do it right. I made them start over. It's, listen, I'll take the divine protection. I'm not going to be mad that they didn't deliver it. I'm just going to hang on for the divine protection. Now, you got to hear the voice of the Lord. Now, here's something important. Almost always with the voice of the Lord, He sends a confirming witness. Yes. Sometimes people don't wait for a confirming witness. They just said, well, I was reading along there and I saw what the Lord said to do. Well, you know, if you open your Bible just right, you can say, Judas went and hung himself. Mm -hmm. And then you open it just right again. It says, what thou doest, you know, do likewise. Mm -hmm. and, and you open it one more time. It says, and do it quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean that was the voice of the Lord. Exactly. You know, I've had the voice of the Lord come through a little child before. Mm -hmm. I prayed about something. I got the word of the Lord on it. A little child looked at me and says, you know, you ought to go, up, you ought to, go to Mexico. I, there, no reason to say that, but I was deciding whether I was going on a mission trip there. I was asked by some other preachers to be a part of it, and a little child said, you ought to go to me. I, I'm figuring, where'd, you, where'd that come from? <laughs> it was a confirming word of the Lord. I don't even know why they even mentioned the word Mexico, mm -hmm. but it came out of their mouth. So sometimes you got to be ready to hear the voice of God. you got to hear the voice of God. And you've got to pray that you do what he said to do. Now this is a very powerful point in patience. Mm -hmm. Patience is staying deliberate towards the things of God no matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. We had some people come to us and say, wow, we knew you 30 years ago. You guys are still working for the church. You're still in the ministry. You're still involved. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't know that there'd be someone that could be that faithful. You know, it's surprising to some people that you've got to be steady. You gotta you gotta stay steady. Now, the opposite of patience, somebody help me. What's the opposite of patience? Impatience. Say it again. Impatience. Impatience. Anxiousness. Impatience. Impatience. Do you know what the definition of impatience is? An eager desire to get relief. Shortcut. 
a shortcut. An eager desire to get relief. Impatient. When you want to find a conclusion to this, bypassing God's will, you're taking a shortcut. I'm going to do something else. It's an eager anticipation of doing something to get relief now. There, you can always make disasters in the kitchen if you do that. Amen? Now, you got to be patient. 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 That means you're long... And I, I looked this up. Long and Patience has one definition called long-spirited. And I stopped to review that. Long-spirited means that you have endurance or consistency. Long... That's why somebody said to me, you've been doing this 30 years, that's long-spirited. Mm-hmm. That's long-spirited. It's endurance or with patience, and you do it consistently. Romans 12, and you get to verse 12, in the Holman's translation, it says it like this. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Wow, that's pretty serious. That's pretty serious. Be patient in affliction. You know, that's one time we're the most impatient. When we're dealing with affliction, we want it to be over yesterday. (laughs) We want it to be over last week. Before it started, God, why didn't you just take this away from me? He said, I want you to be patient in affliction. Now here, endurance is implied. I'll stay with it and stay with it. The Greek word here in Romans 12, 2, where it says, be patient in affliction, the Greek word is hupomai, hupomenai, excuse me, hupomenai, which means specifically consistent. Oh, that's the second time we mentioned that. 12-12. Yeah, 12-12. Hupomenai means consistent. You know, it's hard to be consistent when you're dealing with a headache. And it won't go away. And it keeps throbbing. And you're saying, oh, I thank God I'm healed. I thank God I'm healed. I thank God I'm healed. And after about three times, you go, oh, God, this is really hurting me. (laughs) Oh, I think I'll go lay down. Oh, God. You know, God wants us to be more consistent than that. Any of the previous teachers or current teachers, one thing you look for with any kind of student is consistency. If they get their homework done correctly, you have to ask yourself, you've never done it right before, how'd you do it this time? Well, my mother helped. Yes, it is in wrong writing. It's just somebody else's handwriting. <laughs> yet my mother helped. You know, consistency <coughs> means that you can do it again. You're going to stay with it. I like what Kenneth Copeland says. He says, it's my bat and my ball. We stay and play till I win. <laughs> I mean, that just makes sense to me. You just stay consistent. In Hebrews chapter 10... You get to verse 35. I got this this one scripture from the Lord and I asked him, how in the world does this figure in to persistence, to patience? And he said it like this. Read the, read the scripture. Well, Hebrews 10.35 says, cast not there away, therefore away, excuse me, cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward. And it goes on in verse 36 and says, For you have need of patience. I already read that one. And after you've done the will of God, you've received the promise. But how do those two go together? He says, don't cast away your confidence. Stay steady. Steady. Don't cast away your confidence. Confidence is a very tricky and spiritual thing. Confidence was put into us by the Lord. That's how we're supposed to believe God, with confidence. The amount of confidence we have increases 
the amount of belief we are steady with. If we're confident in the Lord, we're steady in believing. Abraham believed God. If you read it in other translations, it says he was confident in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He was confident in his belief. And it was counted unto him as righteousness. That's how confident he was. He was confident in the Lord. He trusted in the Lord. Confident and trust are pretty similar. In fact, they're interchangeable from Old Testament to New. If you trust in the Lord, you're confident in God. Mm -hmm. You're confident. Anybody ever have somebody say, I'll come and pick you up at 6, and you're waiting at the door at 6, 615, 630, 45, 7, 7.30, 9. And you didn't call them because you have confidence in them. But when they say they're going to pick you up the next time, what happened to your confidence? You blew my confidence, man. I mean, you, you didn't come get me. I don't know if I can trust you. Right. It happens in marriages all the time. Even when one, with one break in the confidence level, your trust factor starts to fall. Mm-hmm. But if you do it consistently, and you're always breaking your trust with your spouse, they have lost confidence in you for sure. It's the same way with the Lord. He promised He's going to take care of things, and He said He was going to do that, but when you don't trust Him, you're not confident in Him. He said, you have to stay therefore confident. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't let your confidence slip. Don't throw it away. If you hold on to confidence, it has great recompense of reward. Somebody else's Bible say something besides recompense? Will be richly he will richly reward you. <laughs> yes. Years ago, we was way back. The kids were at home when we were young, and I was. Uh, I still remember. I was going through a really tough time, and I had remembered God's word. I was really just getting into Him deeper, and I remember at that time telling the Lord, "I have no evidence whatsoever to do here. I don't see you. I don't feel you." But I believe in your word. Mm-hmm. I believe what you said. And therefore I know you're with me. And no matter what I see or hear or feel, and everything you learn to say started turning. Turning. For the better. It was awesome. Confident. Confident. <laughs> Another definition of confident is fully persuaded. Abraham was fully persuaded that what God said he was going to do, what he had promised, he would be faithful to perform. He was confident. He was confident. This is something we need to encourage at our confidence level. Mm -hmm. We need to work on our confidence level. Some people say, well, I'm so shy, I just don't have any confidence. It has nothing to do with your confidence. Your confidence should be based in the Lord. Trusting God. Your confidence can be raised by increasing your trust factor in God. It also increases your personal factor. Mm -hmm. It increases. In Hebrews 6, in Hebrews 6 and verse 12, it says, See that you be not slothful. Mm -hmm. Slothful. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Now, what's it mean to be slothful? Who has a different translation? You have one that says lazy? Well, it, it can mean lazy. Anybody sluggish. else? Sluggish. Sluggish. That means I do it sometimes or I don't do it. Anybody ever had a sluggish drain? It works sometimes. It didn't work sometimes. It works, but it's slow. That's the point that God is making. Don't be slothful. Don't be lazy. Don't be sluggish. Don't put the thing off. You've got to have patience. You've got to hold on to patience. He said, with patience, you will inherit the promise. Again, I say, no patience, no promise. He said, if you hold on to patience. Patience and faith are the power twins. You've got to have faith with patience. 
He said, with patience, with patience, don't be fooled. We need patience. We need patience. Go ahead. When you were talking about Abraham, yes. it says, when you talk about it, it says, and being, and being fully persuaded that when he had promised, he also was able to perform. It says, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone. It says that it was imputed that it was imputed to him, but for also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for a justification. Whoa. Whoa. So it's imputed to us. To it's live. also for us. And this is really important. Since I mentioned that faith and patience are the dynamic duo, they're the power twins, you can say, I have faith. I have faith. But if you have no patience, you show nothing. Because faith without works, and patience is a work. Because when patience has her perfect work, you'll be entire and complete and want nothing. So that, that fruit has to be developed. It has to be developed. He says patience can be developed. When you have all faith with no patience, you say, I'm going to receive the fullness of God, but not without patience. Without patience, you won't receive the promise. The Bible says patience is consistency, staying consistent, staying with the word in your mouth, staying with the word on your lips, keeping it on the window, on the board, on the on the wall. you got to have patience by keeping the word in front of you. So it's not just, well, I, I said the prayer this morning and I'm done. I'm patiently waiting now. No. No, you're not patiently waiting. You're lazily waiting. You're laying there watching TV in the hospital. I've been to lots of hospital rooms where people are laying there watching TV. I say, what are you doing? Well, I'm watching gun smoke. You know, getting my needs met. You know, believing for the promise. No, they don't answer like that. They say, I'm watching Gunsmoke to keep myself occupied so I don't think about my problem. I'd be thinking on my promise. I'd be holding on to what God's Word said. Because if we're not being consistent, how do we ask for the promise to come now? He said you're going to receive the promise if you stay faithful in patience. Somebody read me or note that verse that talks about wait upon the Lord. Anybody heard that verse? When you wait upon the Lord, you renew your strength. You mount up with wings as eagles. Come on. Yes. He says, wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. And the interesting part of that word wait, it doesn't mean to lackadaisical hang out. Which some people think, well, that's what wait means. Just get, I was waiting on the dock of the bay. That's not the wait that he's talking about. It's not that kind of wait. The way he's talking about is the weight that you get in a restaurant when there's a waiter. Mm -hmm. The ones that are really good continue to come by and check on your water level, they check on your tea, they check on your meal, and anything else I can get, and they don't forget about you. Right. They keep showing up because they want to make sure that you're taken care of. It's not just all about the tip, it's all about you coming back. Right. So the better they are in the waiting part the better you are in the steady, consistent part. So this is the Lord saying, I'm trying to get you the promise, but I need you to be a better waiter. Mm -hmm. You need to be a better... They call those waiters Server. servers. Okay. Are you being a good server? Well, I showed up early. I appreciate that. But we got to be consistent. we got to do it again and again. And we got to... Listen, anybody ever made your bed... Come on, there's only, there's only two of us that made the bed. Oh, there's other people that made My question is, why did you make the bed? You're going to get in it tonight, right? Why wash the dishes? You're going to eat on them again tomorrow, right? Why flush the toilet? You're going to use it again, right? Now, somebody somebody said, no, that's a, that's a gross one. Yeah, they're all gross. They're all gross. Because you didn't do what you know to do. Some people are just lazy and they don't do what they're supposed to do. This is part of our plan. This is the plan of God for us is to be consistent and to be on track all the time. Now, 
it's amazing. This is how some people say, it's amazing that you're still following the Lord after all these years. I think that that should be normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a normal thing. That's something God expects from us. Mm-hmm. And He says, He says, if you stand steady and be consistent, you're going to see the promise. Mm-hmm. James 1 and verse 2, I love this verse. He says, my brethren, James 1 verse 2 through 4, He says, my brethren, count it all joy. The word count is taken there from a mathematical term that means to add it up and see what it equals. So if you can count it up and see that it equals joy when you come into diverse temptations, tests, and trials, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works nothing. Oh, that's oh, that was the doubters, unbelievers, by the way. The the trying of your faith works what? Patience. Uh huh. The trying of your not the trying of your patience, the trying of your faith. It works your patience. When patience has her perfect work, then you will be entire and complete and want nothing. This is where God's trying to take us. This is the promise in the full. He said, no patience, no promise. No patience, no promise. They're paired together on purpose. They're given to us specifically. Perfect work. Perfect work. In the NIV it calls it mature and complete and lacking nothing. This describes true prosperity. Every sense of the word. Lacking nothing in any area. Lacking nothing. Anybody ever eat a meal out of it and they they kept bringing you stuff? They brought all the condiments and they brought all the extra stuff and brought you bread three or four times. Stuff just piled up. And you're like, I I can't even eat all this. They said, that's all right. It goes with the meal. And they just keep bringing it out and they bring everything and pile it up. And you're like, wow, they they brought me a lot. That's how God wants to bring stuff. Mm -hmm. The problem is you don't have to eat it all in the same meal. But he says, I want you to have it. Discipline. Discipline one. That's the base word for where we get the word disciple. It's disciplined one. It's the disciplined ones. And we don't like discipline too much. But he says, you got to discipline yourself. You discipline yourself. And be consistent. Consistently allowing him to work. Then you'll be complete and entire and want nothing. Colossians 3, you get to verse 12. In Colossians 3, 12, I'm going to read this from the Wymouth translation. It says, Clothe yourself, Colossians 3, 12, Clothe yourself, therefore, as God's own people, holy, dearly loved, with tender heartedness, Kindness, lowliness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. Once again, the word long suffering means patience. <coughs> Do this with patience. Patience, patience is needed when the situation looks bad. Anybody ever have a tire go out on the road? When the tire goes out on the road, what's the first thing you do? Oh, praise God, glory God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Oh, trust you, Lord, glory to God. You know, I think that sometimes we don't put our praise around the way we should. I have a a friend named Ron Perry. Ron Perry had trouble with his car. He's a great praiser. He had trouble with his car on the road. Tire went out. Pulled over to the side. He's on his way to minister at the time. He was trying to get to San Diego. The tire goes out. He's on the side of the road. He didn't, you know, start all kinds of conversation. He raised his hands up in the car, and he was praising God. He's just praising God. You could see him just singing, just praising to the top of his lungs. And a policeman pulled him over, or pulled behind him, and came up, and he he rolled the window down. He was still praising God and holding his hands up. He said, you know, do you think you're being arrested or something? He said, no, I'm just praising the Lord. And he said, you're sitting here with a flat tire. He said, yeah, but I'm supposed to be ministering down in San Diego. He said, you know, God's got perfect time. Just praising God. Just praising God. He said, you know, 
Anybody that talks about God like that, when they got a situation, he said, i got to hear them preach. Get in the car. Let's go. And so he took him to San Diego. So he preached his meeting in front of this guy who then had taken his tire to get it fixed, brought it back and put it on. And sent him on his way. Now you would say, well, that doesn't happen to everybody. No, but it does happen to the praisers. Because they were rejoicing and confidently receiving the promise. Because his patience, his gave him the promise. This is the word of the Lord to him. He says, now, patience is needed when people get on your nerves. Yes. <laughs> Anybody had someone stand on your nerve and it was the last one you had? Come on. And, and you knew that they were getting to you? It almost got your goat? Well, if someone's on your nerves, you're in need of patience. Anybody ever had, let me help you, <clears throat> road rage? If you've ever dealt with road rage, this is a lack of patience. And the Lord says, get a handle on it, because it's keeping you from going after the promise. If you're lacking in one area, it's usually a sign that you might need help in another area. So this are, these are th some things to help you. Also, Anybody ever try to teach somebody how to do something and you were patiently trying to show them until they messed up three times? Three strikes, you're out, buddy. That's it. Three times. I'm done. I'm out of here. Listen, if you try to teach somebody, sometimes it takes more than three times. Anybody ever try to teach a child to walk? And after about three times, you go, man, that's a stupid kid right there. I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> that, that boy never learned nothing. <laughs> That boy so stupid. It, it takes a little more patience. Sometimes you got to hold him up. Come on, let's go. Hold on my finger. Here we go. You don't let them fall and then forget about it because you have patience with them because they're there. They're yours. You're yours. The reason we stop having patience because they started influencing our thoughts. Usually it's not our own child, but if it's some other child, we have a little trouble with that. Are you with me? Patience. Patience is not the, just the ability to wait, but it's holding a good attitude while you're waiting. Wow. Wow. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 14, reading this from the NIV version, it says, and this is 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive Encourage the disheartened and help the weak and be patient with everybody. Everyone. Oh. Be patient with everyone. This kind of goes against our own philosophy. I've got patience, but don't my patience are wear come on. My patience are wearing thin. <laughs> what happened? Myself got in the way. <laughs> Myself pushed all the patience out the door. Ephesians 4 verse 2 says it like this in the World English Bible. I know I'm quoting a lot of other Bibles tonight, but I read all of them. And the World English Bible says, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 2, With all lowliness and humility, with patience, bearing with one another in love being eager to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. He says, with lowliness and humility, with patience. With patience. Patience is the companion, we already said this, patience is the companion of faith, but it's also the companion of wisdom. Wisdom and patience go together. Be patient and understanding. Wisdom and patience go together. Life is too short to be vengeful and malicious. Be patient instead. Be patient. The key to life is utilized in your ability to use patience. You ever seen somebody that was patient about everything? They just didn't get upset. You know, Pastor Jenny's dad was like that. He, 
I don't care if the dog was chewing on his leg. You go, well, look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's like, he just had a way of holding back unwanted emotions and passing through everything like this doesn't matter. Let's get to the other side of this. But he didn't try to in increase anxiousness on anybody. He didn't try to thrust his feelings on people. He just acted patiently. Mm -hmm. Patiently. Patience, when it is utilized, it is the power of life. It's the key to life. It's the key to life. Now, here's something important. I got, th this is a, this is a little, um, what's the word? Um, an example from the Lord. How do you get the chicken? It's hatched. You don't break the egg with a hammer. Are you with me? <laughs> it's got to be, this is how you get your promise. It's hatched. It's patience. You don't beat it out with a hammer. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, and that's where you were going, the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians okay. chapter 5 and I, verse 22. I, I just want to say something. I, I, I know it's a little bit like it says, in your patience you possess ye your souls. You possess. Yes. Your, that's, your, that's your mind and your will and your emotion. All your soul is tied up there. And it says that in Luke. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. I'm taking this from the English standard. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness, self-control, and against such there is no law. So yes, you're right. Patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It is an actual fruit from God. Patience is self-restraint in troubled times. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Patience is being consistent in every situation, even if it doesn't seem right. Anybody ever been to the store and the little blue-haired woman in front of you pulls out 72 coupons in front of you and you only have one item? Come on. And something you're going, ah! Because your patients are wearing out. Patience. Patience. Patient means to be compassionate with a position of power. You are patiently waiting. It's a position of power. God regards patience and strength. He strengthens our faith with patience. We add the patience and he strengthens our faith. Having patience is difficult. Let me help somebody. Anybody ever struggle for patience? <laughs> it's like I've had people that say, I've been praying for patience. I'm going to tell you. Let me help you. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. What does that mean? You're going to have more trouble because he strengthens our faith in patience. You're going to abide through the trouble and your faith is strengthening your patience. Both work either way. Your patience is strengthening your faith or your faith will strengthen your patience. Hang on. God is wanting us to stay patient. Having patience is difficult. I guarantee you it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. It's not easy. For the Christian, it's imperative. But Christians fail at patience almost equally to the world. Because patience is acquired. It's a spiritual thing. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's a spiritual thing. Patience is a spiritual thing. Having, having patience is difficult. But in our weakness of lack of patience, in our weakness, God reveals His strength. Because if you prayed for God to help you through this situation, He gives you patience. If Don't pray for patience to get through. You pray that He gets you through this situation. He doesn't deliver you from the situation. He'll deliver you through the situation. He'll give you patience to endure. 
patience, patience. Because it is a fruit of the Spirit, it is a fruit of the Spirit. Some people know how fruit grows. How many days before a fruit tree flourishes? Some people say, well, it takes at least a couple years before they can in, uh, before they can cross-pollinate and finally have some kind of fruit, that kind of thing. However, I've been with farmers that can tell you exactly when to plant cucumbers and expect them to grow. I tell, I've been with farmers that tell me exactly when they can plant the tomatoes and when the harvest will be. Exactly. I mean, the day they plant from how long they're going to receive the harvest. They know exactly how long it's going to take. They know exactly what it's going to, what's required. They water it so many times. They have the, the, the sunshine so many days. They know exactly what it's going to take. And you say, I've never watched over my plants quite like that. I mean, I just water them when they need water. And I, I help them when they, you know, because you're not a farmer. Farmers do that for their living. If we took patience as serious as God does, we take this for our livelihood. Wow. Through faith and patience, you inherit the promise. Patience. Patience. You're not to count the days, but you're to make the days count. Amen. Wow. Now, God says in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, love is patient. Oh my goodness. So if you run out of patience, what if you run out of? Come on, help me. I can tell you the truth. <laughs> and God is love. If you run out of patience, he said love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast, it's not proud. But the first thing there it says love is patient. Love is patient. Now, in 1 John 4, 8, it says God is love. Yeah. Well, I thought love was patient, but God is love. Therefore, if love is patient and God is love, we can extrapolate that out and equate to this. Patience is God. We're supposed to act like God. In Ephesians 5 and verse 1, it says this in the English Standard. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Be imitators. The word there is mimic. Imitators. You're to mimic like a mime. You're supposed to imitate. You are to do what God does. Jesus only said what the Father told him. He only did what he saw the Father do. He said, this is how you get your faith up to the highest level. You only do what I tell you to do. Only say what I tell you to say. If you're imitators of God and you're doing what God said to do and love is patient and God is love, God is patient. If you're to be like God, you've got to be patient. Oh my goodness, you mean to be like God? I gotta be, I'm helping somebody. If you're going to be like God, you got to be patient. You mean with everybody? With everybody. That includes your spouse if you have one. you got to be patient. You know who you're the least patient with? The folks that you're with the most. Because you expect them to do the way you would do it now. And you're least patient with those that you've already told what to do. So if somebody's telling you, I didn't, I'm not doing it your way, you say, whatever, you do it your own way, then I've about half and done with my patience with you. But the Lord says, be imitators of God. Put patience on more stuff and watch for more promises. Yes. That's why I said be merciful as the Father is merciful. Be merciful as the Father is merciful. If you take your eyes off the time distraction, that is, how long I'll allow my patience to work with someone. Take your eyes off the time distraction and put your eyes on the Lord. The trial will go so much easier. The test will go so much faster. The temptation to break out with words other than patience will be eliminated. Anybody ever been, don't raise your hand, <laughs> been tempted to say something 
when somebody got on your nerves, mm -hmm. our patience were being, mm -hmm. our patience, instead of our faith, our patience got tried. you got to help with patience. You will conform to the image of God. Last verse. Last verse. Psalm 62. That's the one you were quoting. Psalm 62, verse 5 and 6. Psalm 62. Verse 5 and 6. Patiently wait for God alone. I'm reading from the New English translation. Patiently wait for God alone, my soul. He's talking to his soul. He says, soul, listen to me. Shut up. Quit being so anxious. Patiently wait for God. Patiently wait. Don't try to do this on your own. Patiently wait for God. For he's the one that gives me confidence. He's the one that gives me confidence. He alone is my protector. He alone is my deliverer. He alone is my refuge. I will not be upended. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. I will not change. Patiently wait for God, my soul. He was telling his soul, shut up. <laughs> Mind, quit it. Emotions, stop it. Anybody ever have somebody, you're getting on my nerves. That's one of those emotions, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you've about pressed the limit. When folks can press you that limit, I'm telling you, you need to pray and endure. Because your expectation should be from God, not what people can do for you. Listen, we always expect somebody else to do what they're supposed to do. But when they don't, that ever happened to your little kids at school? But when they don't, we can find ourselves upset. I told them what to do. Do you ever think about getting a big paddle and putting them over? Now, they don't allow that in school. They did when I went through school. When I went through school, the bigger the paddle, the more the discipline. They would take you in front of the class, bend over, grab your knees. They'd only hit you one time, but after you flew three or four feet, everybody in the classroom did exactly what they were supposed to do. There was no question whether there was a problem or not because they didn't have any patience for that kind of stuff. Your discipline created more patience in all the other students. I wonder if God wants us to hold on with discipline, creating patience makes His promises work. I want the promise of God. And God said very specifically to me, He said, I want you to work on your patience level. And I thought I had pretty good patience level with most people. But there are some times my patience gets thin. And I've told the Lord, you know, I don't want to be like that. I don't want that to be I don't want that to be my character. I don't I don't want to be the guy that's known as he goes off the handle. I don't want to be known as the guy that that says his own, speaks his peace. I want to be known as the guy with patience. I can appreciate Pastor Jenny's dad. I don't know why. He was the calming factor of the house. No matter what was going on, he would just nod his head. If they were out of money, you never knew because he didn't break the, he didn't break his, his countenance for one bit. You didn't know if there was a problem or not. He handled everything with the same demeanor. He was patient. I believe God was touching his heart. I believe we need to make some kind of change. <laughs> I ask God for more endurance when dealing with other people in certain matters. Because with certain things, I, I know it's a temptation. I know it's a test. I know my patients are running thin. And I don't want to be that way. Anybody else want to take that prayer with me tonight? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do pray that you help us with our endurance level.
that Father, no matter what the situation, no matter what the person, no matter what is done, we don't look at it like it's that person, but we constantly, we consistently stay in patience, we stay in faith, we stay working towards this one thing. When patience has her perfect work, we will be complete and entire and want nothing. Father, we're holding on to this. Our patience brings the promise. No patience, no promise. We trust you, Lord. We are built up in our endurance and our patience level, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.